Hey guys, it's Sarah Sargent and I'm back today with another video and in today's video I thought that it would be fun for me to share with you guys what my favorite things were of 2020. Yes, I know, shocking, it's not a makeup video today and um, although it is really hard to remember the good things of 2020 because uh, it was such a rough year for everybody i do have a couple of well more than a couple actually like quite a few favorites that i discovered in 2020. i wanted to share with you guys what those are and i broke them down into categories um i'm going to be looking at my cell phone here because i wrote them all down so i want to share with you uh some of these things and some of the items I have here with me and then um, some of them I'm just going to be inserting photos of so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Please let me know if I have said any of your guys' favorites. Also, let me know if there's anything that you guys had as 2020 favorites in any of these categories that I'm going to talk about. Just let me know if there's anything that I should know about because I definitely love getting recommendations from you guys. So. I guess, without dragging it out any longer, let's just get into it. I started with like my favorite TV watching of 2020, and I guess I'll get started with TV shows because, I mean, just to be completely real, I probably watched more TV this last year than I have in my entire life. I have always been kind of an avid like movie watcher, TV watcher, at least I considered myself kind of an avid watcher, but um, nothing really compares to the amount that happened this last year for obvious reasons. I mean, we couldn't go anywhere. We had to keep ourselves entertained somehow. So um, yeah, there was a lot of binge watching going on. So first up, I have uh, TV shows and I wanted to talk about a couple documentaries that I watched uh, that I really enjoyed. The first one is uh, The Goop Lab on Netflix and if you guys are familiar with Goop Brand, it's run by Gwyneth Paltrow and her staff and they have kind of curated all, like an entire lifestyle. So it encompasses like health, food, fitness, beauty products, uh, philosophy, just everything. There's six episodes of her show on Netflix and I watched all six episodes and I really loved it. There are episodes about uh, the benefits of exercising in really cold temperatures. There are episodes on like psychic abilities. What else? There's an episode on different types of detox diets. It was really, really interesting. I would definitely recommend it. And it also kind of sent me down this rabbit hole of researching more in depth about the different things that she was showing on these shows and researching more into the doctors that she was featuring on these shows. So it kind of, um, this show kind of opened Pandora's box for me and I'm so grateful that I discovered it and I would just really highly recommend it if you guys are into any sort of self-help, um, you know, whether like physical self-help, mental self-help, uh, diet, any way that you could possibly improve yourself, please check out this show. It's so good. Okay, the other documentary TV show that I wanted to just briefly touch on, I binged through, I swear, in like a day, maybe two, was The Tiger King. And I know that everyone out there has seen this show too. Like all of you guys have watched this show. So you definitely know what I'm talking about. It was a complete train wreck to watch. I held off on watching it for uh, maybe a week or so, maybe a little longer. Um, when I first saw the ads for it, I just really, I wasn't that interested. Uh, I don't agree with having wild animals as pets and being held in captivity whatsoever. I'm totally against it. So I really wasn't interested in watching a show about that. But once I heard from some other uh, friends who I trust their opinions on, I mean, the show is so much more than that. And while it 
certainly didn't change my opinion on owning exotic animals. If anything, it just reaffirmed my thoughts in it. It was a very interesting watch and very entertaining. Next up, I have dramas for TV shows. I took the dive and watched every episode of The Crown. I had never seen it before and I kind of just watched it from episode one all the way through the end of I think season four is the most recent one with um, Diana and it is so good. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. It I, like I've never followed the royal family at all. I know who the basic players are obviously. I, kn I know who Diana is. I know who Prince Charles is but I never really was the one to like read the gossip columns about them or anything so I didn't know anything about all of the scandals and you know all of the political things that happened and this show is so well done like not a single episode in it is uh, boring or drawn out I was totally engaged for every minute of every episode. The casting is so good. The actors, every single actor on that show just knocked it out of the park. Five star show, so well done. Would definitely recommend that if you guys haven't seen it. The next drama that I absolutely loved was The Haunting of Blythe Manor. And this was a sequel uh, to The Haunting of Hill House. So the stories are not connected, kind of like, um, American horror story. It's like it, it season one does not follow into season two but the air of the show is similar. Um, it's a similar type vibe. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to ruin it for anyone that hasn't seen it but it is about ghosts and it's probably the most accurate depiction of ghosts that I have ever seen. In the idea that I have about how ghosts are and I mean just to clarify I totally do believe in ghosts. The idea that I have of them is so closely aligned to the way that they're portrayed in this show. If you guys have ever seen the movie A Ghost Story uh, starring Casey Affleck and Mara Rooney that's another movie that is just scarily accurate in my opinion. So anyways if you guys like ghost stories I would definitely recommend watching it. The next one that I have is Ratchet, uh, which is Nurse Ratchet, which is from Ryan Murphy, who's the creator of American Horror Story and uh, starring Sarah Paulson. This show was so good. I'm hoping that they're gonna come back for a season two, but I'm almost wondering if it was only just meant to be like a, like a only one season limited series sort of thing. Every single still of this show could have been a work of art. Like you could pause at any point in this show and print off whatever was on the TV and hang it on your wall. It was such a beautiful show. And the storyline was so good. And Sarah Paulson is just so amazing. She is just so terrifying as Nurse Ratchet. Just I mean, if you guys saw it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, and everyone on that show did an amazing job too. Okay, the next two dramas that I'm going to talk about, I don't think were very popular. This next one um, was actually a foreign German drama called Dark. And it is subtitled or dubbed however you want to watch it because it is spoken in German. But this show have three seasons. It's a sci-fi show that is a little bit, it's kind of like a melancholy sci-fi and the basic premise is alternate time span. And again, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but you really have to pay attention. There's a lot going on in these stories, but um, it's, it's basically just different people and different timelines in like alternate universes and it is so good if you guys like sci-fi type things um i would definitely recommend watching it it was really really good the last drama tv show that i have to talk about was the oa and this is another one that i didn't hear a lot of people talking about it's also on netflix 
there was supposed to be three seasons but there are only two and because of covid they decided not to film the third show and it it, it has been canceled unfortunately so we're not going to get a third season but even just with the two seasons i would highly recommend watching this show it's very hard to explain but it's another sci-fi type show and it touched me so much the story is about a higher awareness or a higher being and that person's effect on the other people that are with her after watching the show it was something that just stuck with me for weeks and I kept thinking about it and kept thinking about it like do you guys ever watch the like shows or movies like that that really just stick with you I just couldn't get it out of my head so I definitely would recommend that one also on to comedy TV shows first up I have Schitt's Creek which is amazing again I had never seen it before um, it's something that I discovered in all of these quarantine lockdowns I was just kind of skimming and came across it and decided to give it a shot I think I heard one of my friends recommend it as like a binge worthy TV show so I checked it out fell in love the first episode and that was another one that I just binged it's so lighthearted and funny and easy to watch and you don't have to think too hard it just puts you in a good mood. It reminded me of those Christopher Guest movies that I love, like that same type of like satire humor, uh, like Waiting for Guthman or um, like Spinal Tap, Best in Show, A Mighty Wind, all of those. This TV show really reminded me of that. And if you guys like Schitt's Creek but haven't seen those movies that I just mentioned, you should definitely check them out because the comedy is very, very similar. The next one that I want to talk about is called Jack Whitehall's Travels with My Father. And this show, I laughed so hard. I mean, it is probably the funniest thing that I watched all year. It is definitely British humor. It's um, a British comedian and his father, and they're both playing themselves. He takes his father, who is very, like, white-collar, very British, um, old, proper, stiff upper lip, um, strict kind of, you know, British father, and he takes him on these travels and the shenanigans that they get into and what he um, inflicts upon his father on these travels are just so funny. I mean, I one episode in particular where they go in for a Thai face slapping massage had me in tears. I was laughing so hard. So um, I believe that's another one that's on Netflix. So you guys should definitely check that out if you're looking just to laugh. Another one that I really loved, which is definitely a dark comedy, is called Afterlife. And this is starring Ricky Gervais. This is about a man who has just lost his wife to cancer and is very, very unhappy with his life. Pretty much hates everyone and everything and is struggling to cope, basically. It's a very depressing premise, but it is very funny and very smart. Again, so a dark comedy if you guys like that kind of thing. Next one that I have here is Letter Kenny. So this is also really hilarious. It is a Canadian comedy and I have seen a couple of episodes last year, I guess 2019, one of my tour managers after the shows when we would be on the tour bus at night we would watch a couple episodes of this before we'd go to bed. But I had only seen a handful and there's like seven or eight seasons of it so I really hadn't seen that many and I decided to kind of start it from the beginning and watch it in order and it was so funny. I absolutely love it. Canadian humor. The jokes in it are so fast that I feel like I could even watch it like two and three times and still pick up on um, jokes that I just missed because it, it's so fast. It's really, really funny. Okay, the next category that I have is movies. So first up, I have documentary movies. Okay, the first one I want to talk about is called My Octopus Teacher, and this is also on Netflix. This is a documentary about a man who spends um, nearly a year with an octopus, and it 
is so amazing these just miraculous incredible creatures what they can do what they're capable of is pretty mind-boggling and uh, by the end the movie actually had me in tears so I would highly recommend this movie it was really touching and I really really enjoyed it Okay, the next documentary that I have here is The Social Dilemma, which I don't want to talk too long about. Um, I think it's a really important documentary that everyone should see. It is about how social media affects us all in very, very negative ways. I did make some changes after watching it, so I would encourage all of you guys to watch it if you haven't seen it. It might scare the crap out of you, but um, you know, definitely something that everyone should see. The last documentary that I want to talk about is called Mucho Mucho Amor, The Legend of Walter Mercado. And this documentary, I loved it so much. It is about the legendary and iconic Walter Mercado, who was a Hispanic astrologer, kind of a bigger, larger than life personality. I kind of liken him to maybe like a Liberace type character, but seeing him speak, and I really didn't know anything about him before I watched this documentary, but watching him talk, he was such a kind and loving person and so inspiring, so artistic, and just like kind in the most genuine of ways. I really really enjoyed it. If you guys like kind of quirky characters and like seeing true stories of real people, um, then I would recommend watching this. It was very interesting. Okay, the last movie that I have to talk about is a drama and I watched it uh, recently in December and it was Harold and Maude. So I can't believe that I've never seen that movie before. Obviously I've known about it for a really long time. I want to say it was filmed in like the early 70s and I, I kind of knew the premise but not really. I knew obviously that it was about a younger man that falls in love with an older woman and that's kind of all I knew about it. After watching it, it is so beautiful. It's definitely like a like another one of those dark comedies. At times it is very dark, but totally inspiring at the same time. Maude, the, um, the older woman character, she was so inspiring to me. Like every scene that she has, all of her dialogue, I and mean, she kind of like became my hero, like just a, a feminine hero by the end of it. And I'm really shocked that more women don't cite her or um, talk about her because it for a strong female character in a movie I mean she was just amazing okay next up I want to talk really quickly about books I didn't read as much as I would have liked to this last year I think most of my time was spent watching TV actually one of my resolutions for this new year is to read a lot more than I have been but um, I did read a handful of books and out of those, uh, a couple of them really stood out. Most of what I read are autobiographies. I really enjoy hearing true stories from like a personal account. Uh, so somebody writing like mem like memoirs or autobiographies. So first up I have uh, Neon Angel by Cherie Curry. And Cherie was the lead singer for The Runaways, like a 70s punk rock band all female of course um joan jett was in this band who's one of my favorite people of all time so it was really interesting and also totally heartbreaking to hear about sheree's childhood and upbringing and you know it was fun to hear about her partying to excess but also very heartbreaking at the same time but there is a resolution in the book it does end on a positive note and it was a really fun story Next up I have Wildflower by Drew Barrymore. I listened to this on an audible on a drive uh, across country and it's read by Drew Barrymore so that made it extra fun and the thing that I like about this book is that every chapter is a completely different story on a completely different timeline so it's not written in chronological order. You could literally pick the book up and um, read 
any chapter you want and have a resolution by the end of it. So it was it was super fun and I love Drew Barrymore. She's such a good time. Okay, next up I have Mr. Know-It-All by John Waters. And uh, this is another book that was written very similar to uh, the Drew Barrymore book where each chapter is its own complete story that can just be read at leisure. And John Waters is my favorite director. I think he's hilarious. He's also one of my favorite authors. Um, so I, I've read everything that he's ever written and he is just hilarious to me. I really enjoyed this book. Lastly, the book that I most recently read, this one I read in December, is called In Watermelon Sugar by Richard Brodigan. And this was probably uh, my favorite book that I've ever read, honestly. It was so unique and unusual and creative. It was unlike anything that I've ever read. I guess he's kind of like a surrealist writer. His storyline is kind of like being in Alice in Wonderland or, you know, waking up in the morning and trying to recall a dream where, you know, nothing makes sense and everything makes sense all at the same time. At some times it was like I was reading a poem or like song lyrics is what it reminded me of. It, it was so unusual and I read it in two nights because I just couldn't put it down. I was just flipping pages like crazy and after reading that one book I plan on reading like everything that he's ever written. The next category that I want to talk about is makeup. And first up is Sugar Pills Orange Pill Palette. And actually it's, it's called the Capsule Collection. There were, I think, four of these that Sugar Pill came out with this year, but this one is my absolute favorite. This is the color story in it. I love the shades in here so much. Out of all of them, this one is completely my favorite. I love how versatile it is. I did a couple videos with this palette, which I will go ahead and link up above for you guys if you guys want to check out the looks that I did and see this palette in action. Okay, the next thing that I discovered this year that I absolutely love is this Ofra. Nikki Tutorials collab highlighter in the shade Cloud 9 and this goes so perfectly with my skin tone as a highlighter. It is like a creamy pink highlighter, um, maybe a little golden too, like a golden pink creamy highlighter. So it matches my skin really well, but it is also completely blinding at the same time, which is great. It also does not have glitter in it. I hate highlighters that have glitter. This is just perfectly milled, shiny, buttery, beautiful highlighter. Next up under, I guess beauty, this isn't really like a makeup category, it's more just like a beauty category is Pureology Color Fanatic Spray. So I discovered this one uh, recently, but I don't know how I've ever lived without this product. This is a spray that you use on your hair when it's damp and then you blow dry it dry and it makes your hair so thick and voluminous and soft, silky, shiny. I mean, it just does everything. Like every good thing that you could ever want your hair to be like is what is in this bottle. It is truly a miracle product. I mean, this might be my absolute favorite product of 2020. Like out of everything I'm going to talk about, this could be my most favorite product. And um, this is also something that now that I've discovered it, I will never ever be without this product again. It is so amazing. Okay, the next thing that I have to talk about is this Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Extra Strength Daily Peel. And this is Alpha Hydroxy, I think acid is what they are. One pad is an exfoliator and the other pad is a neutralizer and so you do one pad you rub one pad all over your face and then you follow up with the other pad and when i say that your skin is like so soft i mean after using this my skin was the softest that it has ever been which is really hard for me to achieve because i have ridiculously dry skin like scaly dry skin and I'm constantly using really thick moisturizers and really heavy-duty exfoliators trying to like get that skin off but this right here was like a miracle product 
And I've always been really afraid of using like acids or like heavy duty products on my skin like this because I thought that they would make them drier. Like I thought I would just have a bad reaction to them. But my friend recommended this product for me and gave me a couple of them to try out and it's like a miracle product. It's so good. Okay, next up I have a nail polish that I want to share with you guys. This is by an indie brand called Palette Polish, and this is in the shade Turmeric. Specifically, I love this shade. It is, uh, I think, my favorite shade of nail polish that I have. I have um, a handful of their polishes and like every single color that they make is amazing. You can check them out on Instagram if you'd like. They are at palette polish my good friend reed her store carries this line also that's how i had come to find out about this polish actually was from my friend's store her store is called mary and moss and they ship also so you can pick these polishes up on their website or through their instagram they're just amazing and they make the best colors Okay, next up I wanna talk about some fragrances uh, that I discovered this last year. And this one right here is probably my number one favorite fragrance ever. This is by Kai by Gay Straza is the maker of this, but this is rose oil. And it smells like the freshest, fresh rose you could ever smell. Something about this is like, not like dried rose or like older rose. This is like if you were out in a blooming English garden of roses and smelled a rose, this is exactly what this smells like. It's so magical and I love how tiny it is. So it travels really great. I put this in my pocket a lot of days. Literally like it's a rollerball, one little dab of it and it lasts all day. It's so potent. I just adore this. And this I also discovered from my friend's shop, Mary and Moss, uh, that I was talking about before. If you guys are interested in this, she also makes a gardenia scent that I have also, which is, t oh my gosh, it's so amazing also. This one is my absolute favorite, but I wear the other one a lot too. But you can pick these fragrances up from um, her shop as well. The next fragrance that I have to talk about is Stella Peony. And this scent is described on Stella McCartney's website as pink, peony, amber, and a hint of black pepper. And this just smells so amazing to me. It's floral and like musky, but, but fresh as well. It's kind of like, there's something bright about it. So it is like moody and musky, but um, but bright and floral and um, obsessed. A lot of times I will actually mix these two together to create like a signature scent, um, which I guess isn't a secret because now you guys know, but so good. The last fragrance I wanna talk about is a very special fragrance. This is Alexander McQueen. I don't actually know the name of this one. This is one of Alexander McQueen's special scents that you can only get at Harrods in London. There were seven scents, I believe, six or seven of them that are exclusive to Harrods. So this is a specialty one. This particular one, the scent is rose and crushed red peppercorns. It's another one of those like floral, spicy, moody sort of scents. It smells so good. Um, and honestly, this was rather expensive. So I am kind of hoarding it at the moment. I don't really wear it that much because I know it's gonna be impossible or nearly impossible to get another bottle of this because I would have to go to London and, and pick up another bottle. So I'm gonna probably make this last for a very, very long time. The next category that I wanna talk about is fashion. And first up is this Free People jacket I have on here. Let me see if I can show you guys. It is a motorcycle jacket, so it zips up. Yeah, has little zippers, pockets, has a detachable like sweatshirt hood on it. And um, it's also vegan leather, but very, very warm and very well made. I got this jacket when I was in um, New York. I got it at the Free People location in Chelsea. And 
I have worn it all year. I love this jacket. I was so happy to find it. It goes with everything. I wore it on the two tours that I did earlier this year. It went uh, overseas with me on the European tour that I did earlier this year also. So I'm traveling with it. And you know if I am traveling with something, I am absolutely loving that item. Okay, the next item that I want to talk about is a ring. Actually, I'm going to talk about a couple of rings. Um, the first one I want to talk about is this one right here, um, this little delicate cross ring. This is by a jewelry maker called Immortal Jewelry. She spells it um, I-M-M-O-R-T-A-L-E jewelry on Instagram if you guys want to check out her items. But I found this ring when I was in... Australia at the beginning of the year. This was in a really nice, super cool boutique that carried a lot of New Zealand uh, high fashion handcrafted items. Um, the shop was absolutely amazing. The woman running the shop could not have been cooler. And so I picked up this super cute, delicate little cross ring there and I wear it all the time. Um, this is another one that has also traveled with me that I took on tour and I wear it like a lot. The next ring that I want to talk about is this eye ring right here. This is from The Great Frog. They are probably my favorite jewelry brand, one of them anyways. This ring in particular is so special. They get their fake eyes from one of the British hospitals in London. So the eyes that they use are real prosthetic eyes, so they look extremely realistic. I love this. I had been looking at getting this ring for a couple of years, actually I had been thinking about it. And uh, so this last time that I was in London earlier this year, I went in and I finally picked one up and I really love it, they're so unique. Okay, the next and final ring that I want to talk about is by Pamela Love, who is another one of my very favorite jewelry makers. And she has this like double knuckle um, snake ring right here. There's two snakes that wrap around. They're connected, if you guys can see that. Two snakes that wrap around my fingers with an eye in the center of it. And I really love this ring as well. And it's actually more um, comfortable than I thought. I mean, you can't really spread your two fingers apart too much in this ring, but um, it doesn't seem to hinder my movement too much. And it's just so cool. I love it. Okay, the next fashion item that I want to talk about is a vintage rock t-shirt that I got. It looks like this. You guys can see that. And it's the same image on the other side. And what this is, it is a vintage bootleg Led Zeppelin shirt. It is bootleg from 1980 and it's also dead stock, meaning that it is completely new. It's never been worn. I don't even know how that happens. Like, I guess somebody just buys a t-shirt back in 1980 and sticks it in their dresser and just never pulls it out. And that's like pretty incredible that 40, years 41 years later i mean the shirt is still new that's like mind-boggling to me anyways this is the memorial shirt from when john bonham led zeppelin's drummer died very unfortunately but that's what this shirt is it's a tribute to led zeppelin 1968 to 1980 when the band disbanded because the drummer died anyways this was super super cool to pick up if you guys don't know i do collect vintage rock shirts it's pretty much all that i wear if you guys would find it interesting to see my classic rock t-shirt collection i would go ahead and film one of those if that's something that you guys are interested in um just let me know in the comments down below i have a pretty massive collection Okay, next up, I have a couple of pairs of leggings that I wanted to show you guys. These are faux leather leggings. They are by the brand Love Fire, and these are so flattering. So basically, they are, they're vegan leather, I should say. They are really nicely fitted. I've heard people describe them as running small. I don't think that they run small per se. I think that they are meant to be extremely fitted because uh, they are, you know, they're leggings. So you want them like skin tight. There's nothing worse than like baggy, bunchy, like leather leggings. It's such a bad look. So um, I, I think that's the reason why these are really fitted. But the top on them is so flattering. They have a super 
wide waistband, which is kind of like tummy control. So they are super, super tight, but because they ha are really high waisted and have this really thick wide band around your stomach, kind of just holds everything in and is like super flattering. So I have a few pairs of these in black, and then I also have a pair in this like black, patent leather like vinyl also which is really fun and these i think are very very similar to the spanx style um i don't have the spanx ones but i know that the spanx ones are like a hundred dollars a pair or more if i'm not mistaken and this brand love fire you can get from nordstrom rack and i think last i checked on their website these are on sale for 18 dollars each so that's totally crazy. But anyways, definitely check these out. They're great. I lumped this in with fashion because it's something that you wear, but is Bandolier and they are who makes my phone case. So um, this is a new one that I just picked up during uh, Cyber Monday sales. This is my old one, which my phone is in, which I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but um, this one has definitely uh, been beat up. This has gone everywhere with me. And what makes this so great is that it is a phone wallet. So you put your cards and your money back here and there's this really secure little snap and then uh, it's in your phone. I have a crossbody strap that connects to this. There's two really secure, sturdy little like metal D rings connected to each side of this. So I have this strap that's a crossbody where my phone just hangs on my side. It's so great for traveling because I've got a really bad habit of setting my phone down and walking away from it, especially if I've been drinking. It is like so bad, but with the bandolier it's like stuck on my body with the strap and it's so nice and easy okay the next thing i want to talk about briefly is this absolutely beautiful hand painted jacket if you guys can see this it's kind of hard to get all of it on this is the back of the jacket and this is the front of the jacket this is an absolutely beautiful hand-painted jacket made by Mary Benson in collaboration with Victoria Watts. They both stenciled and hand-painted this entire jacket. Also, this is a vintage leather jacket. They kind of reclaimed, which I think is so cool. It's like recycled, I guess, which is amazing. I discovered Mary Benson from Noel Fielding. If you guys watch uh, The Great British Bake Off, Noel was wearing a pair of Mary Benson boots. Actually, they're like these cowboy boots with moons and stars. Well, maybe they're more like Chelsea boots, actually, with moons and stars hand-painted all over them, and they're absolutely stunning. So I discovered her through him, and she had this jacket up for sale on her website, and I just had to snatch it up because it was like the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. Okay, the next category that I want to talk about is like home items. And I want to talk about this candle uh, called City of Night. This is by Tatine Candles. Their website is tatinecandles.com. This is like the best smelling candle I have ever smelled. Also, the box is really gorgeous. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's this beautiful paper box with um, a moth and a moon like pressed into the top of it. This candle was made inspired by Jim Morrison. On the front it says City of Night, and then on the back it says Or Just Another Lost Angel. I have already burned like half of this candle. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And my friend, Reed, who I mentioned earlier, she runs the store Marion Moss. She sent this to me, so you guys can get this off of her website if you guys are interested in this. This is um, notes of dark hinoki oil, charred vetiver, cypress, fir needles, resin, black pepper, leather, oaken whiskey, and woody florals. So I know that's a lot that I just said, but this smells, I mean, the best way that I can describe it is like a moody, 
super sexy scent. I am, if they made this in a perfume, I would douse myself in it. It smells so good. Okay, the other two home things uh, I want to talk about. The first thing is I've really enjoyed buying myself fresh flowers this year. I've been home more than I ever have. And so it's just been really nice to be like indulgent in an inexpensive way. And every time I go grocery shopping at Sprouts or Trader Joe's, I will pick up just a nice little bouquet of flowers and they usually last about two weeks for me. It's just a nice feeling. It's a nice thing to do for yourself. And then the other thing that I did uh, that I'm really enjoying is I got a Brita water filtration system. This allowed me to completely eliminate plastic bottles from my household. You know, it's so much better for the environment and it's actually better for me too because I'm not ingesting BPAs from plastic bottles and it pays for itself. And I'm just using reusable water bottles, even to hike. I have some metal reusable water bottles that I take on my hikes. It's been really great and I'm really kind of shocked at myself for not doing it sooner. The next category I want to talk about is food. So favorite food discoveries of this last year. Uh, the first one is this brand called Snacklins and these are vegan pork rinds that are made out of mushrooms and they are so good. They are like puffed up super crunchy things, <laughs> little snacky things that are uh, have different flavors. They have like Chesapeake Bay flavor, barbecue, miso ginger, and another flavor that I can, maybe cheddar, like nacho cheese or something like that. But they're so good and they're only 80 calories for an entire bag so you can eat an entire bag of them and not have to feel bad. Next up is another item that I've been snacking on a lot and this is Gimme brand teriyaki flavored seaweed sheets and I know maybe some of you might be cringing right now like maybe that sounds totally disgusting to some of you guys but I love them and uh, I mean I like seaweed but the teriyaki flavoring on the seaweed I don't know what they do but it is so good sometimes I will eat two packages of them in a night because uh, I think they're like 15 calories or something like that for the whole thing and I don't count calories by the way I know that I keep talking about calories but I'm not a calorie counter but I am health conscious and um, these are actually good for you. Like you don't have to feel bad about eating them. They're full of iodine and minerals. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is Mikey's tortillas. They are grain free and gluten free and they come in the frozen section at Sprouts and they are so delicious. I actually, Believe it or not, prefer them to regular tortillas, uh, which is crazy because usually like gluten-free stuff is kind of almost all the time complete garbage, like it tastes disgusting. But these are so good. They are made with yucca flour. They come frozen and then you cook them in a frying pan and then use them to make you know, quesadillas or burritos, any kind of wraps, anything that you would use a tortilla for. They're like chewy and just delicious. I love them. They've become a definite staple in my fridge. Next up is kind of a weird one, but it's Sprouts Mango Kabucha. So if you guys are kabucha fans, and if you have a Sprouts, I would definitely check out the mango kabucha. I've tried some other flavors and they're all good, but the mango is definitely my favorite. I love mango and it's not too sweet. It's very refreshing and delicious. Next up is kind of a silly little mention, but it is smoked paprika. The bass player from Not A Surf turned me on to this spice. He was using it to cook and I smelled it and was just like, what is this? This is so crazy. Like it's so fragrant and smoky flavored. If you put it in your food, it'll be that ingredient that people can taste, but they're not quite sure what it is, but it just really adds that like special kind of flavor to whatever you're cooking. I mean, you can add this to any savory food and it will taste amazing. I love putting it on roasted vegetables. I also love making aioli with it. So if you have mayonnaise, you can sprinkle, um, I sprinkle a good amount of it actually into mayonnaise and like mix it all together and then slather that on 
whatever. It's so, so good. And then lastly in the food category, since we are talking about food, is probiotics. I recently started taking probiotics. I've never taken them before and it's been a real game changer for me. I will pop up a picture of the probiotics that I found. I got them off of Amazon and they are women's probiotic. I believe the two strains that are in it that I was wanting are uh, like lacto something da 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 and like bifo strains. Maybe I'll like type in the strains that I'm talking about because I'm totally butchering the names. But it's been a complete game changer for me. I have struggled my entire life with stomach issues. I have a very, very sensitive stomach. I don't really process my food that well or I hadn't been processing my food that well. A lot of things give me stomach aches and a lot of things are just really hard for me to digest. And ever since I started taking these probiotics, it has been a real game changer for me. I mean, I have never felt better. My stomach is like super easy going on me now. I'm not getting stomach aches or cramping or anything like that. It's really worked for me. I don't know if you guys wanna check them out and see if it might work for you if you guys have similar type problems. The last category that I have here is kind of just a miscellaneous category. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about in the miscellaneous category are my Bose headphones. These were kind of a game changer for me they are the cordless ones that go around your neck and then go in your ear. They're noise canceling headphones. This has been really great for traveling for me. I mean, I know we're not traveling much right now, but when I was traveling, these were so great for on the tour bus because they are noise canceling. So I could put them in at night in my bunk and it really drowned out a lot of the noise around me if there was talking in the bunkhouse or if I went to bed early and people were still up late and making noise in the front lounge. And so these were really nice. I would just pop on a podcast at night in my bunk and just go right to sleep. I couldn't hear anything else that was going on. These were also really, really great on airplanes. Unfortunately, I struggle from like anxiety around flying. I can get really like worked up and panicky over it, which is completely ridiculous because I mean, I have to take an awful lot of flights. I travel for a living. So it's kind of silly for me to be so anxious over flying. Unfortunately, it's something that I deal with. I get motion sickness too, which totally sucks. Uh, well, motion sickness on airplanes, thankfully not on tour buses, because then I'd be in real trouble. But when we are taking off or landing, or I mean, even just for the entire duration of the flight, I have these and I turn on the noise cancellation and not hearing like the banging of the landing gear and the creaking and the groaning of the plane as you're like elevating. It has been so helpful to like keep my like anxiety panic attacks at bay. So these have been super helpful. The last thing that I have to talk about is probably the most important thing that I did this last year and that was keeping up with hiking or walking daily, every single day consistently. This has been so great for my mental health. It's great for my physical health, but you know, to be completely honest, I do it more for the mental aspects of it. It's really good for calming your mind, especially in such a stressful time as this last year has been. It really has helped to stabilize me. I mean, it's good for me to get out and get physical every day too, because, you know, just sitting on the couch day after day, you know, watching movies and eating snacks uh, is not great either. But uh, this, was, this was a nice thing and a nice healthy thing that I could do every day. Um, I have a really nice mountain that I live next to that is not very populated that I can hike on without running into other people which is really nice. So I've been doing that or going for walks around my neighborhood every single day. So if you guys are feeling anxious and just, you know, aren't feeling good physically, start with just going out and taking a walk. It really does make a world of difference. Also on my walks and hikes, I have been listening to the Goop podcast, 
uh, which kind of wraps around to that TV show that I was talking about at the very beginning of this very long video. But they, they have a podcast also, uh, which I have been catching up on episodes of that. And um, it's been really, really great. So it's almost like a time of like mental meditation while I'm doing these you know, physical activity, which is really great. Anyways, I think that I have gone on and on and on, and I hope that you guys are still with me and not too bored. Please let me know if you found anything interesting that you want to check out, any of my favorites that you're going to check out, or if there's anything that you also love that I mentioned, or as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if there's anything that you think that I missed that I should know about that are your favorites, please let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any future videos. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Sarah Sergeant Pepper, and... I think that's it. I'm going to say goodbye now. All right. Bye.